Among all this military might, the entrepreneurs are out to make their buck. Jim Benson's rocket engine technology was on show on the 4th of October last year. The privately funded Spaceship One took a man 100 kilometers into space twice to win the $10 million X Prize for the first private sector manned space mission. All of a sudden, you just saw this contrail just start up, and it just went straight up, and everybody was yelling and cheering, and uh, I think it was about a 15-second burn, and we became the first private vehicle to ever exceed the speed of sound, and we did it in 15 seconds going straight up. <laughs> I was there for both flights, and it was awesome. You know, I mean, I was standing with the wife of the astronaut, um, the children, um, and you know, there was a few seconds when it when it was actually in space where they, where they lost contact, and um, and it's you know, I mean, it's it's awesome. It's obviously worrying when it's something which is completely and utter, utterly and experimental. Um, the value of a ticket onto uh, Virgin Galactic, and I'm sure all of you would like to sign up today, is $200,000. Uh, Sir Richard Branson is now using Spaceship One technology to boldly go into the space tourism business. His ship, the VSS Enterprise. Three years from now, we'll be sending paying passengers into space. We'll be sending them, you know, our spaceships will be launching every day. Um, so we'll have, we'll have five spaceships. They'll, they'll t carry six passengers per, per spaceship. Uh, each passenger will have an in incredible view out of the spaceship. Uh, each passenger will experience weightlessness in space. Uh, e each passenger will come back as um, fully qualified astronauts. Uh, with so their wings? With their wings. Would you like to be a tourist and go up into space? I would love to. I would love to be, yeah. Would you worry about whether you came back in one piece? Who cares? Would you go up in space as a space tourist? No. No. Yeah. You would. I won't mind checking it out up there to see how it is. Would you worry about the risks? No, I don't think it would be. If they perfect it to that point, it probably wouldn't be any more dangerous than flying today. It's not going to be as safe as a 747. Um, it's not going to be as safe as uh, an Airbus A340-600. A3, um, and, uh, and that's something that, that, you know, that any, any, anybody flying will have to accept. You know, I'm, I'm going up in the spaceship, my dad's going up in the spaceship, my mum's going up, my children are going up. Um, you know, we've, we, we've got to make sure it's as, absolutely as safe as possible. We, we can't have the same record as NASA, which um, loses 4% of its, you know, 4% of their astronauts. If things did go wrong, however, there's not too much that ground control can do. Would the private sector uh, front up, or would the government underwrite that, or how would that work? Well, we have spare spaceships, so we, we could send up another spaceship to try to help a spaceship that was in trouble. Um, uh, I'm sure that NASA, you know, N NASA, if they had a craft available, um, would do the same, but I don't think they, they, you know, that they would actually have the, the right kind of craft, um, you know, to send up if, if, if a spaceship got into trouble. Space is not for the faint-hearted. NASA's return to flight mission is the first shuttle launch since the Columbia crash that killed all seven astronauts. On board this July will be Australian Dr. Andy Thomas. There are lives and reputations at stake. Do you think it's realistic that within five years we could have uh, Virgin going up in space and bringing back a thousand or two thousand tourists a year? Quite frankly, I don't know. I think it's, it's whether the public want to accept that risk. Sir Richard Branson's vision is much more than safe space travel. It's a whole new frontier for the Virgin franchise. To be sending people to space and to be the only company in the world sending people to space, um, I, I suspect will propel Virgin up to you know, being one of the best known brands in the world, if, if not maybe one day the best known brand in the world. And then hopefully one day you know, to, to build a Virgin Hotel in space and maybe you know, have a, a, a Virgin Hotel on the moon, which would, which would be um, spectacular and something which we, which we would like to aspire to. Well, if you look at the intent of those international treaties to uh, not just keep space for peace, but to treat space with respect, 
uh, it's 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 pretty bad. With law still unwritten, money and physics now seem the only obstacles. But that may all change as the world becomes more paranoid about terrorism and old and new superpowers flex their muscles. Do you think satellites will be used for good and evil? Um, in terms of, no, the satellites won't. What people decide to do with the information that comes off the satellites, yes. But uh, a glass of water is needed for life, but you can drown someone in it as well. It's a very simple rule of the game. If we don't all behave at the end of the day, none of us will be able to uh, really uh, reap the benefits of space. I personally believe 200 years ahead, our kids, 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 kids will look back and say, gosh, gee, at that turn of the millennium, there were all these events in the war, in the world, tsunamis, 9-11s whatever and golly gee the earthlings crawled off earth and started to explore their neighborhood a little smarter will the optimists be right as space becomes militarized and commercialized the challenge will be to keep the integrity of space at least in our part of the galaxy